A warm welcome to Disky Talk with Luyolo. If you're tuning in for the very first time, I ask that you please do subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you've been a part of this journey, I ask that you thoroughly enjoy this episode. So, on today's episode, discuss all things DSTV Premiership, Kaiser Chiefs versus TS Galaxy. This is um, the opening weekend of the DSTV Premiership with regards to the fixtures for this season. So we will then have a look at how that game will shape up from a tactical standpoint. And in the extra time segment, I will then proceed and then give you my prediction of how the game will play out. However, let's head straight into the tactical preview. So the blue team then will represent Kaiser Chiefs and then the red team will represent TS Galaxy naturally so by virtue of the fact that they do wear red. So with Kaiser Chiefs then uh, we do know that Stuart Baxter's favorite formation has been the 4-2-3-1 and um, which sees uh, Itumile Nkune in goals, Jagulo uh, Blom at right back, two center halves being um, Matoho and uh, Cardoso. At left back, you've got Santi, uh, a double pivot of uh, Nange and uh, Cole Alexander. And then on the right-hand side, Sukhota. On the left-hand side, Biliat. And then Parker and Nukovic up front. So it's a 4-2-3-1, which at times does transition into a 4-4-2 when you see um, Parker and uh, Nukovic becoming a lot more central with regards to the shape that they take up. And um, when we then have a look at um, the personnel, so in goals, uh, Kune, very experienced, club legend. However, I just feel that uh, a Brandon Peterson or a Bruce would be, um, I think, in my opinion, would be a better pick in goals. And um, when we then have a look at the back four, um, happy with Blom at right back. Um, I think that he's a bit more defensive and um, a bit more solid than Arif Frostler is. I think Frostler really struggles in this position. And um, also what I like about Blom is that going forward, he does also give you that offensive outlet with regards to his final ball. We do know that he got that um, lovely assist uh, against Sundowns when uh, he put the ball into the box for Bernard Parker. So he can do that. So him or Frostler there, I'm, I'm happy with that. And then with the center backs, I would personally look to have uh, Njabulo Ngobo in there because I just feel that um, when it comes to reading of the game and when it comes to his, his intelligence and technical skill set, he's a much more complete center half than both a Cardoso and Matoho. However, this is the center back partnership that Stuart Baxter likes. Uh, the double pivot of uh, Cole Alexander and uh, Nange as well. Very industrious, they work very hard, and uh, I think they'll grow and uh, become a, a very good pair in the heart of midfield. And then when we then look at um, the two wingers in Sukhota and Biliat, uh, Biliat is, um, look, we all know what Biliat can do on his day. However, he hasn't really had the greatest of um, the greatest of times at Kaiser Chiefs. However, I think this season could be a season to kickstart and uh, actually get going, you know. So at least um, we did see somewhat of a good showing against Mamelodi Sundowns. He was able to get the goal as well. Sukhota on this side, very quick, very dynamic. He will look to switch and go to the left. And uh, special mention obviously has to go to uh, Keegan Dolly. Um, he's a player who I think within the next couple of game weeks will then become a, a, starting, uh, a starting feature in this lineup. I just think that um, he's not 
where he should be with regards to his fitness as um, you know he in recent times he did struggle with injury and um, he wasn't a regular at Montpellier so it's just about getting him up to speed and then looking as to um, him getting into this lineup and then looking to contribute because he is a very explosive very dynamic player who can be so pivotal for this case achieved side and then in this position I'd like to highlight that in uh, Sabelo Khatebe and uh, Nkosu Pilengomo, I think you've got two players who can do very well as a number 10, who can also then, if needs be, um, just drop a bit into midfield, you know, and I think they would complement uh, the double pivot and the double pivot would complement them in turn because these are two players who should be playing off the cuff, should be playing um, in the half spaces. Uh, in the central zones, looking to dictate, looking to create. These are two players who I think are ready to play in this case the Chiefs side, as young as they are. But when you look at how the case the Chiefs side is set up, I think it's set up in such a way that they can excel with two pivots who um, do the defensive work in midfield for them, two quick wingers and uh, a target man up front that they can create for. So I just think that they should be looking to um, institute either Sabelo Khatebe or Ngosi Pile Ngobo in that position. However, I would go Ngosi Pile Ngobo as a number 10. And then, when we then have a look at um, TS Galaxy. So, with regards then to um, Owen Degama. Owen Degama is a um, very pragmatic coach, in my opinion. And um, he likes to go with... Uh, a, a, Let's say a 4-5-1. That's what I would say is his most favorite uh, formation. However, sometimes it does tend to change. But I've gone with his most likely um, formation and system that he likes to institute, which then is the 4-5-1. And um, with regards then to TS Galaxy, we haven't seen much of them. In fact, we haven't seen them play any game prior um, to this encounter, which will be their first game of the season. So I've then gone with um, most likely combinations by virtue of the fact that um, how they performed last season and the number of the games they've played last season and the type of players, if they fit into an Owen de Gama um, philosophy, if I could say. And um, what I will say about Owen de Gama is that he's more adaptive to what the opposition do. So he looks to nullify and uh, he also looks to stifle opposition, keep it as tight, as tight as possible, and then look either to hit the team on the counter attack or look to score with a set piece. But let's head then into TS Galaxy. So in goals, um, there's Marlon Hugh, or you can have Van der Linde. So those are two players who were competing for that position, but I would go with Hugh by virtue of the fact that he played more games last season. And then, um, as the back four, at right back, uh, you've got Sanoka, who can start in there, or you've got Munyai. So with regards to Sanoka, Sanoka is a lot more defensive. Munyai is a lot more balanced by virtue of the fact that he does give you the width so he can go. And uh, in my opinion, he's a lot better on the ball. So if it's up to me, I'd go with Munyai. But when we have a look at Owen de Gama and how he likes to set up, I think you'll go with Sanoka as the right back. And then the two center halves, you've got Macbeth Masangu, um, the young player who has made um, a name for himself. He's done very well in his debut season and uh, even earned himself uh, a call-up to the under-23 um, national team and uh, where he was part and parcel of that Olympic team. And then you've got uh, Msimango as uh, the left-sided centre-half. And then at left back, you've got Sedat. So Ibrahim Sedat um, is one of my favorite fullbacks within the DSTV Premiership. I believe that he's got so much quality that he should be playing for a top four side, you know, and um, his technical ability and um, his reading of the game is so, so good. This is a player who, in my opinion, should be a lot further in his career. However, he's still nonetheless a very good player. He does start as the left back for TS Galaxy. And then in the midfield, uh, we do then see a midfield three of Umbunjane, um, Obas, 
and then um, Ethan Brooks. So with Mbunjane and Ovas, they are a lot more on the defensive side. Ethan Brooks is more than the player who will occupy the half spaces. You know, he plays as an eight and um, lots of energy. He's got legs on him. So he is more the creative player in midfield. I wouldn't really say he's a 10, but more of an eight. And he forms part and pass, parcel of a midfield three, which then will look to obviously then stifle um, the creative players of uh, Kaiser Chiefs, especially when Billet comes in and occupies the half space. And then you've got um, when you'd have Parker in there and then when you'd have uh, Nukovic in there as well. So that midfield three then will look to um, stifle uh, Patuche Zanange and Cole Alexander whenever they do get onto the ball in central areas and then look to dictate play. And then when we have a look up front, so on the wings, they've got lots of speed, lots and lots of speed. So on the right-hand side, um, they could either go with uh, Mukhaila, who's a very quick player, or they can go with Nyama. And Nyama is a young, very dynamic and explosive player. I really like him. So I would go with Nyama on the right-hand side. And then um, up front, uh, you got uh, Makupu as the target man or Wade Lekay. But I would go with Makupu as I think he's a lot more complete. And then on the left-hand side, you've got uh, 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 Potongo, if I'm not mistaken. I, I struggle to pronounce Potongolo or Potongo. Uh, between the two, but also a player who came through the Ajax system. Uh, he did go overseas, but now he's back in South Africa. And uh, that's who they have on the left-hand side. Or they can go with Shozi. Shozi, who is very quick. You know, very, very quick. And uh, a player who offers so much speed and width. So this TX Galaxy side has so many options when you have a look at it. I mean, in midfield, you can also go with them Ruli as well. So they've got lots of options. When you look at this TX Galaxy side and um, Owen Dagama, because he is a tactically adaptive coach who's also pragmatic, he does look to adapt to what the opposition do. So he does look to then adapt his team according to how the other team sets up. So he also then looks to rotate uh, the pack and they've made quite a few signings. And uh, it's going to be interesting then to see how they, they kick on. Just to mention a few, um, Mkom Mkombelo at left back, You've got Mohamed Anas up front, who said girlfriend, and then he said wife, and eh, then we didn't know what he was saying. But yeah, they've got Anas as well, just to mention a few. So they have also um, strengthened their squad. So it's going to be interesting to see then how TS Galaxy fare out. I just think, though, that from uh, a playing perspective, um, they're not the most exciting side. And to me, I'm very disappointed with that, because when you look at the type of players they have, and the creative players they have, I think they can be uh, a lot more expansive and uh, a lot more expressive with regards to how they play. So these are players who can actually go out and play beautiful football. But because of the type of coach that Owen Dagama is, he's very safety first and very pragmatic and um, he grinds out results. Yeah, so from an entertainment perspective, you won't get much of it but he's the type of guy who gets the job done. So I do then see them competing within the DSTV Premiership. So I would say maybe a top eight finish that they'll be looking, uh, especially considering the fact that they finished ninth, just outside of the top eight in the past season. So they will be looking to improve upon that. And then when we then have a look at the key players going into this encounter. So um, when you have a look at this encounter, so... Like I mentioned, Biliat is coming into his own again. So I think Biliat will be a key player coming into this encounter, especially uh, looking to exploit and manipulate those half spaces when he pops up into those half spaces. And um, Sihota on this side as well could prove very dangerous as um, that backline of TS Galaxy doesn't have much speed. Off the bench, we can look forward to Gosen Pile Ngobo, Savelo Khatebe, and the Keegan Dolly as well. I think these are three very, very, very exciting players. And what I like about them is that they offer very different components to a football game. And uh, they could be impact players that come on and change the game. So for Kaiser Chiefs then, we're looking at an 11 of Kune and Goals, Blom at right back, two centre-halves, 
You've got uh, Matoa as the right side at centre half. Cardoso as the left side at centre half. At left back, we've got Shanti. Uh, two in midfield. Uh, you've got a double pivot of Patu Nange, Cole Alexander. You've got Sikhota as the right wing. You've got Parker, who will then join up, you know, sort of playing as a second striker. You've got Piliat on the left, Nukovic up front. And then when we then have a look at this TS Galaxy side, uh, I think uh, Matkupu is going to be very important as uh, I think um, he is uh, their key player with regards to his ability to hold up play and... Uh, to also disturb these two. And whenever those set pieces are played, they always look for him because he's very good in the air as well. Very physical player. So he is their key player. So when you have a look at um, TS Galaxy and um, the players then who could, other players who could make an impact, you're looking at Nyama, you look at, at uh, Mukhaila and uh, Shozi, another quick player. But a player that I'd like to mention is Brooks, you know. I think this is his season where he can come into his own and he can really grow within this TS Galaxy side and become the player they build the squad around. So you're looking at an 11 of uh, Marlon Hugh in goals. At right back, Sanoko. Uh, two center halves. You've got uh, Macbeth Maslangu. You've got Msimango. You've got Sedat. A midfield three of Mbunjane, Obas, and um, uh, Brooks. And then up front, you've got um, Nyama, you've got Matupu, and you've got Potongolo. And uh, yeah, so that's TS Galaxy, and that is Kaiser Chiefs. So moving on then to the extra time segment, where I will predict uh, who will walk away victors and win their first three points of the season. So with regards to this game, I think, um, look, TS Galaxy will look to nullify Kaiser Chiefs and stifle them. However, Kaiser Chiefs will have the lion's share of possession, and uh, I think they'll use the ball really well. And I foresee Kaiser Chiefs winning this game 2-0. And uh, I just think TS Galaxy will struggle, especially in the final third, and also progressing the ball into the final third. Also um, struggling to um, occupy the half spaces and um, attacking through the central area. I think they'll struggle at that. And I think they won't be as fluid when it comes to their passing game. So because of that, I don't see them winning the game. And I see them conceding two goals. I think Kaiser Chiefs will win this game 2-0. So, ladies and gentlemen, at home, do let me know how do you feel about this encounter? Who do you guys think will win? And which are the players that you would like to see in the starting 11? So, thank you very much for tuning in to yet another special episode of Disky Talk with Luyolo. And as always, I am your host with the most and I go by the name of Luyolo. Signing out.